Hey, what's up everyone, Moy Kosin here, and we have another new breakdown for you today. I'm really excited about doing this breakdown. It's gonna be a long jump breakdown on Mike Powell, who is the world record holder in the long jump. He was able to almost jump 30 feet back in 1991, which is just absolutely crazy. I'm really excited to be able to just get a little bit more of the biomechanics side of what's happening when he's going through the jump. I, I recently did a little bit more of a biomechanical breakdown from a running perspective, and I do that a lot with running, but something that was able to really get deep into the muscular side and just looking to get a little bit more into the biomechanics of the actual jump here and, and what's going on as he's going through the actual jump. So, and as always, if you like the information, go ahead and click the thumbs up down below. That really helps us out a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have any comments or recommendations for us, please leave those down below. We'll be happy to get to those when we can. And let's go ahead and hop into the video right now. All right, so um, of course the video is gonna be a little bit older because it was filmed in 1991, so it's a little bit more pixelated, but I still think we'll be able to get some cool information on what's going on as he's going through you know, some of the stages of his actual long jump. So you can see as he's getting close to the actual initiation, and this is the step before, and I really think for all, anybody that's out there that's wanting to understand you know, long jump, you could really learn a lot from just the step before. Look at how tall he is as he's running closer, and, and he really stays like this basically the whole time, but then right when he gets to that, that step, right before he's gonna jump, and his ability to kind of load into that. Notice, you know, he's, everything's very long, very open, and then now he goes and really sinks down. He, he flexes in the thoracic spine, right? He really goes through a lot more knee flexion, okay? He also is able to bend a lot more in that ankle, gets a little bit more dorsiflexion, and is able to let that knee almost go up over that toe, or at least is even with that toe. I know we don't have a, the best angle right here. And then almost more importantly, you can see him really sit back into that hip, almost like he's trying to do like a single leg squat. You know, he's sitting back here where before he's running very upright, not letting his hip go back at all. And then right before he goes into the actual jump, notice how he sinks down into it and he sinks down by bending the knee and sitting back in that in that hip, right? Because you don't want to end up just allowing that knee to come forward and get your to the, the knee to go into too much knee flexion and lose the ability to really load that hip. So it's very important to be able to understand that when you're bending that knee, you also want to be able to sit back in that hip to make sure that you're loading the hamstrings, you're loading some of the muscles in, you know, the hip flexors, you're loading some of the muscles in the back and lower back and the core, uh, the adductors, all those muscles are getting loaded properly as you go and, and it's really important here i know that there's people that talk about being able to land with this foot right underneath the hip i've yet to see really a great long jumper that lands with their foot right underneath the hip everybody's going to be a little bit more in a flex position at that initial landing phase where that foot's touching the ground and you know the leg is basically as straight as you could possibly get it and you can also see where his head was facing straight and then he really arch back look at how his chin ended up facing straight up in the air and then really got a lot of extension in that lumbar spine as he's about to go through that takeoff and, and when you see him going through that takeoff it really matters a lot on how much you're able to extend fully through that that calf and and uh ankle joint, right? And foot joint and toe joint. So for anybody that's really trying to get better from a long jump perspective, I'd say you definitely want to do some exercises where you're on, you know, one foot and you're working on your ability to get full extension within the calf. Um, you know, we can, we can add some exercises for you right here that, that will help you in working on that and, and making sure that you're able to yeah, maximize that extension because it, it is a lot about the plyometrics, it's a lot about the strength. You can't do this without having a strong core, a you know strong uh, glute, strong lower, lower back. All those muscles need to be very, very strong. And more importantly though, you're also not gonna be able to do this if you don't have the range of motion to be able to push off within that toe and, and get the, range of the right range of motion within that ankle. So it's, they're gonna be you know two things that'll go off together in order to really maximize your ability of doing this and, and, and being able to, to have a great long jump, right? Being, being able to really get yourself to get full extension through all the extensor muscles, right? That's what's amazing about the long jump. It's such an activation of so many muscles in the back of your uh, body and, and being able to really hold on to that as long as you can. Even as he's in the air, he's trying to really, you know, when he jumps, he maintains a lot of extension even as he's going and floating through the air where he's leaning back, leaning back, leaning back. And yeah, he ends up going into a little bit of a flexion there within his legs, but you know, you can see his back 
is trying to maintain extension his whole body weight the center of mass is definitely trying to go that way right um, as he's floating forward and he just got so much momentum with that push off that he's allowing his body to be able to kind of fall back as he's going through the actual long jump and then really has a lot of range of motion to be able to reach up and get his toes as high as he's able to uh, in order to, to complete the landing so I just wanted to give you guys a little bit more information about the long jump. I think the last breakdown, I've seen a lot of people that have liked the, the breakdown. And so I wanted to do, give you guys another one, give you a little bit more information. My knowledge is always improving. And I wanted to really put a big focus on the ability to get that full extension within the ankle and the importance of being able to do that in order to maximize your long jump. All right. As always, thanks for watching these videos. If you have any questions about you know, getting a breakdown like this for yourself or anything like that, we have that down below. We also have some programs to help you work out in, in your plyometrics and be able to gain a better overall long jump that we'd be happy to help you out with. You just got to go ahead and contact us down below and we'll go ahead and get you started within one of those programs. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.